Yes, thank you. And Sunday morning for Carmenides study group. <coughs> and you are going to see something new. Very interesting. There will be dust, dust on the countertops. <laughs> the floors will not be vacuumed. There'll be things laying all over the place. Good. It'll look like I don't give a fucking damn. <laughs> 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 and trying to make something perfect that is in a state of decay. And I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. Um, the other thing is, I just, I just need to, you to know that if there is anybody shouting at Pierre, I will call the police and accuse them of elder abuse. Because I'm, I'm tired of witnessing that. I've witnessed it every time Pierre comes into town, and I'm done with it. I'm calling the police if you're on my property and you shout at Pierre and I let other people know that. Okay. Dave, the, the meeting on Sunday is 8 though, right? And the meeting on Sunday is 8. Okay. Take a look and tell me what it means. That's all. Take your time, look it over. Tell me, what would you do with it? Yeah, what does it mean? How do you understand it? And it is over here. Those are my rules. Come, of course, it comes right out of Hesiod, so anybody who writes about this, this is the source from which they draw their material and later their implications. <coughs> Get a jump in? Well, the, the first thing that came to me is that we can't read this literally. Like when Zeus is talking to Iapetos' son, we can't, if Zeus is God or the high God, supreme God. He can't be deceived. <laughs> so, whatever this story means. Yeah, that's where we want to go. Go ahead. Whatever it means, um, we have to understand such details in another way. Well, go, go ahead. <laughs> well, I think this is the creation of man. All the various things that go into um, how we become troubled and uh, the role of divinity in our troubles. Okay, look here. Whatever answer anybody gives, you have to decide whether or not it answered the question. See, everything he said can be true, but did it answer the question? No. Oh. No. So I guess you'd want to go further, wouldn't you? Well, it means... Well, go ahead. Do your part. Okay. Try it. You kind of said generally that... Yeah, no, 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 you do it. What, oh, what? I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, by the way, that could be very positive. Well, I was going to start reading it a second time. Okay, go ahead. Take it a second time. Uh, Neymar said that the making of man, uh, I related to it, uh, it seems like the fall of man. Like, uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, okay. I lost the question. What's the question? This question? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does the myth mean? Yeah, why, why you know, what, here, show me. <laughs> By the way, this is a myth. Oh, oh, well, what's it mean? Uh, is there anything in it worth discovering? I mean, is there a purpose, a goal? I mean, I, I just wondered. John. I can't answer the question, but the first thing I think I would want to know, at least personally, in trying to answer the question is, what does fire represent? And what was so bad about Prometheus giving it to us? Well, uh, <clears throat> in terms of the story, with fire, it was also included the arts, as understood by the Greek idea of art, that is, those kinds of skills that will benefit someone who possesses the knowledge, and also knowledge of dreams. I'm sorry, also what? Knowledge of dreams. So then we still have, the, I would still have the question, the rest of the question, which is assuming it's the arts and knowledge of dreams, again, what is so bad about our having those things? A and B, why would Zeus be so pissed that we have them? Wait a minute, uh, Barbara, do you think those are good questions you should answer or not? Mm, yeah. Oh, okay. Go According to my colleague, though, you should go ahead and answer them. Thank you. Yeah. See, we're still here, right? please. Well, at the beginning, it kind of bothered me. It seems like they're in a standoff, Zeus and Prometheus. And so Zeus is playing payback and revenge, and he sends a booby trap, no pun intended. That's right. Um, but um, it is a booby trap. But in the jar, which he doesn't mention other than that she's a tent with a jar, mm -hmm. Uh, is all these diseases, and for some reason, help doesn't hope doesn't get out. No. Does that mean that hope is a disease? Let me check. Uh, Brian, answer the question, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not but we'd want to know why he thinks yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, hope is incomplete. It's lacking. So he may be right, but we want to know what... I would, by the way, second, I would second that. Is hope uh, uh, um, a impediment to finding understanding, is what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Good. More? By the way, if you want more, go. Hand up. But if Zeus put the things in this box, but it also looks like he... She... Hope didn't escape because of his will. So why? So he put something in the box, but he also made it such that that one thing wouldn't get out of, wouldn't escape the box. See, in a myth, it doesn't make it. It is not helpful to try to understand why the elements are such as they are. You have to assume that's the condition for exploration, exploring. So go ahead with your... Just that he put something in the box, but he also made the condition such that that thing would not escape the box if the box was open. Then you are assuming that Zeus knew that. Well, it says are you, pardon me, are you not? 
the vessel's lid had stopped her first by will of a despairing cloud compelling Zeus. Isn't that? The question, it's okay. Yeah, but you're, you're trying to answer one question, I think, which is, why is it that hope didn't escape or didn't get out of the box? Is that right? Well, as I'm reading it, it sounds like she didn't get out of the box because of the will of Zeus. No, that has to be in the story. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, that's in the story that she doesn't get out because of his will. But I don't think the point can be made that he knows therefore, that he's stopping her. Therefore, we can't assume that. Right. And equally well... He could have just should, been closing the box and she got trapped. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, equally well, there should be some phrase describing the state of mind of hope that it, it's the result of hope's actions that produce that effect, independent of the role of Zeus. That's either the case or it's not. Okay, look. Um, okay, you're focusing now on hope, right? Cute. And oh, you know. hey, what what might have happened, right? What might have happened is that then she would then be functioning like the others. That's under an assumption, by the way. Um, Therefore, come on, what's, what's the riddle then? So what? So hope didn't get out. Yeah. Like, why have a myth dealing with, hey, by the way, hope didn't get out? Well, is, is the box the soul? We can add that if you want to agree to it, so we oh. can re put that in. If someone's going to talk about hope, they better be able to say something about that jar. Okay. Really, Wait. Pierre, what do you do with the jar? What's the significance of it being a jar that hope is trapped by? That's when they kept their jelly. I want you to answer questions. I'm tired of... I offered, I offered an answer. <laughs> hope stayed in because hope's still hoping, right? So hope uh, is still clinging on to there might be hope. Well, you... Mm. One thing you have is all those evils and diseases, like there's a whole set of them, and they're all wandering, right, mm -hmm. the, throughout mankind, and they're all voiceless, so you never see them coming, right? So it seems like if there's a contrast between the evils that escaped and hope, one thing you know that she might have a more general application, 
because she is not wandering and, and so to speak, like the evils attacking whoever she wants to, if you can build that much of, of a contrast. What I don't understand is why hope isn't described as deceitful, but Pandora is, it appears. <coughs> Maybe she had to talk her way into the Epimetheus' house. So according to the legend, of course, the human race was, uh, it, uh, was uh, eliminated three times before this, right? This is the third trip. And uh, therefore, mankind faced extinction on these two other occasions. This is the third one. So Prometheus then gives the arts and knowledge of dreams and fire to mankind to save mankind from extinction. So they're, they're two, as it were, gifts, aren't they? Zeus gives this, Prometheus gives this. Hmm. Oh, that's a, all right. Thank goodness. I said, thank goodness. I'm willing to thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it that now that the countless myriad voiceless evils have been released, Okay. We've got to contend with them. Okay, see, what did come out of this, right, according to the story, are all the diseases, ills, miseries, right, the evils, the evils that beset man. So obviously, if that's, in, if that's the contents of the box, or the, the jar, whichever you want to call it, and in it was also hope, then hope must fit in that same class of things. Mm -hmm. But it didn't get released. Except, yeah. What does that mean? Oh, uh, hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, and she's in her indestructible home. Mm hmm. That's Elpis? Yes. How do you know that's hope? That's the Greek for hope. Because there's a comma right before it. Comma means. <laughs> Elpis and. Well, that's that's all I can say. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, do it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> ah, it's also to Epimetheus. Epimetheus is yes. is aft is reflection, right? Yes. Yes. So Prometheus brings fire in the arts, but Epimetheus, oh. who's like the afterthought or whatever you want to call that, he that's who gets hope, and it seems then that reflection would be hopeful rather than, say, enthusiastic or insightful, right? And that is not a good thing. That's an evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because instead of seeing in what way you could hit the mark rather than miss the mark, you're hoping things will turn out differently. What follows from that statement? What follows from that? Well, then it's a, a bad thing. The, the positive feeling of hope doesn't bring, isn't a gift, but it's a, a veil over your errors. If so, then that's why it's in the same class as disease, illness, and other yes. evil things that yes. beset man. Yes. Therefore, what follows, if it is not then released, released I'm still working on that. No, you, I'm still working on see, that. That's helpful. That's helpful. Hmm. Uh, by the way, do you think it's possible that... Um, is there some... I'm going to use a neutral word. Opposition between the gifts of Prometheus and hope? That's what I was thinking. Well, keep going. Go well, ahead. 
you don't need hope if you have the arts. Why? You have knowledge. No, no, why? I agree. I I like to agree. Why? Because you have knowledge and you have a way of proceeding that goes through steps to benefit the object. So they have a way of dealing with the sicknesses and the misery and the diseases and the lies and the deceit. Yeah, that's likely. Uh, What did he say? We don't need hope because we have tools. Why is that? Why is that the case? Because the arts. Because we have these tools. Yeah, so what? Not tools. (coughs) Oh, maybe I ought to ask him a question. Well, the arts bring illumination, they bring clarity to the situation that one is going through. They have vision involved in that. To that answer, what you were wondering about? I like it. Who's okay. Uh, Miss? What? I like that too. I think. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I don't know if I agree with you. Why? Well, it's, it's, it's contra- uh, contrasting, kind of taking further what Barbara was saying, contrasting the state of mind of being of hope versus the arts. Okay. Why is hope irreconcilable with the arts that were given to man from Zeus, up from Prometheus? There's, there's no understanding, nor, nor knowing, nor, nor object of knowing or understanding with hope. It's just it's, it's uh, like a fantasy, isn't it? Isn't it like a fantasy of you know a wonderful future? that you're doing nothing to it particular to achieve. Oh. Yes. Right, did you go along with that? Yes, and you're not in any way involved. You have no will, no responsibility for action, no way to proceed. You're just it's a stuck state. No mind. No, it's, yeah, it's no passive. Mind. No mind. It's very passive. passive. Yes. It's kind of like, yes. it's almost like a really good excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I, I was going to say, uh, well, I was going to add to the arts and uh, understanding and everything, every day, intellect versus hope. And the fact that hope stayed in the box, it means <laughs> that we don't have to have it. Like, don't have to have what? We don't, hope. We don't have to use it. We don't have to succumb to it. Like we, like disease and everything else, it's a reality. It's here. But it, hope is still in the box. So if what you're saying is correct, then what is it like living in a Greek world where this is common knowledge and passed on from family to family? What, is, what, is, what does this myth do? That you could catch somebody if they're in the state of hope. They could catch them. So, oh, I'm going in the box. I'm, I'm using hope. I don't have to. It's very, very rational. It's very rational. Because, what is? Uh, well, the culture would be very rational because there is a way of. Is hope rational or irrational? Irrational. Oh. So, and it highlights providence, right? Sorry, did I interrupt you? No, go ahead. It seems to highlight uh, the the role of providence. Um, Go ahead. Well, that hope, right? There's no, there's no room, so to speak, with for hope in providence. So it's boxed up. Now that's interesting. There's no hope in providence. Yeah. Because it's boxed up. It, it, it's, it, it's not part of the game. Like you don't need it. it yeah, but you didn't tell us why. Yeah. What would be the state of mind? Is like. Uh, well, it's interesting that if you, if you don't recognize providence, you're in a box, right? Like you're in the whole box, kind of. I slip down. Okay. Barbara seeing. added a, a very interesting note, right? She said, fantasy. Is there a link between hope and fantasy? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, what is it? It's not real. Daydream after daydream. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's your own, isn't this what he's alluding to here with the, it, you cherish it in your heart, embracing your own scourge. That's what hope is. You cherish in your heart of hearts, you hope, but at the same time your own demise is at hand. Well then, how can it be both? It's um, in your heart, it's in the box. <laughs> So, you, um, why is Christianity, Judaism, and Islamic thought based upon hope? <laughs> He's coming. Hey, if you understand this myth, can you also say, I can see why Trump's followers are all under one category, regardless of their differences? Mm -hmm. They are all hoping. Yes, what are they hoping? That he will deliver on his promises irrespective of his background? But how must he have to appear to engender hope in others? Convincing. Convincing. More. A good promoter. Huh? A good promoter. Uh, believable. <laughs> he believable. Belief comes in. Yeah, Go ahead. It's believable in the face of disbelief, though. Well, and, uh, for, for instance, in the case of Trump, you cannot expect a 70-year-old man is going to become better if, right. if he's done what he's been doing all his life. Right. So in the face of all evidence... <laughs> so, wait a minute. So that's important. Because anyone who gives is able to communicate hope, they don't care about the person's past. All they have to do is convince you that you can go along and hope that they will deliver on a promise. You never are going to look at their past record and see whether or not they have the ability and the capability of fulfilling on promises. What do they have to do? They have to get into a, fa it is a fantasy. See, this is, the, this is the origin of tyranny, is right here. Right? These are the Trump followers. They Past. all live, and they're following the tradition of those, what, they're, what are called Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Could you also... Could, why, could, why, why, why? What, what, is, what is hope? Hope is a desire for things to be better without any method. It's like a, a, a wish. Then how is hope related to faith and belief? It's, it's a driving force. It is a belief. It's a driving, driving it's the force. It's emotional More. force. Well, or, you know, right? it's, I was just saying it's the emotional uh, state. It's a state of it's the state of mind of belief, is faith, isn't it? Well, it's okay, one two, go ahead, one two. And, and and you will play no role in. That's the key. Yeah, you're helpless. No Someone else will do it, or it will happen, but you will play no. Role. No, no, you'll play you'll play a role, but it, it's a special kind of role. Passive. Like, why is it that hope breeds followers? And the followers are willing to go to their death to fulfill the hope. There's only one person who takes responsibility, and that's the person who is willing to be the source of hope. But, hey, we'll believe in, we will believe, we hope will Trump will fulfill his promises. He looks like he knows what he's doing. He shows infallibility. He doesn't care about anything other than continually repeating the same thing over and again. What he keeps repeating, that I'll do things for you you can't do for yourself and no one can do without me. Now they'll all become members of his army, but there's only one person who's going to take the responsibility for it. And that's the hoper.
Well, they're just doing their duty. They just believe in their leader. They're, they're, they're not at fault. They get to remain childlike. Hmm. They get to remain childlike in the hmm. sense of like, my daddy or my mommy will take care of me and I don't need to do anything. And then in the end, if it fails, I can just blame my mom or dad for my life. You know? That's right. It's childlike. Yeah. Right? The followers sure. have to be childlike. Yeah. You have, I know that when I go into Hope or I, I have students that will be like, well, I hope I get better. And I'm like, there's no hope in math. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to teach math. You can say all you have to do is hope. Yeah, yeah there's no hope. Uh, there's no hope. Why? It's hopeless. Because hoping doesn't actually teach you ideas or methods or insight or that's right. under, understanding. Yeah. Said, there's no understanding. Yeah, but they can't. Yeah, you could be like Charlemagne, right? Every night he dutifully put under his pillow writing materials and expected God then will comp comp compensate him in the morning and he will then be able to read and write without any trouble of going through the effort of learning. That didn't work, by the way, for those of you who want to try it. Yeah. Yeah, but... That's all. Trump, not Trump nor Jesus can save those people from the disgrace of being a sucker. Same and thing. And they know it. <laughs> then hope is the central element of Christianity and Trumpism. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's like students who say they hope they'll pass the class. Yeah. And they don't study. That's right. And they just keep saying, I hope I pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you change your view about hope. But, but, Pierre, is there a good hope, though? Like, uh, what are you laughing at? But, like, the people that come from El Salvador or, you know, down south, and they're kids, and they're fleeing terrible things over there, and they're hoping for a better life than what they've got. No, is there a difference between desire and hope? Because those people went through great sacrifices to cross over all kinds of hurdles and difficulties coming here. They didn't stay just with hope. They weren't in Colombia and just hoped they could get to the United States and sit on their butt and do nothing. They had to translate that into action. That's no longer hope. Yeah. Mm. What, what I had on my mind actually ties into that. Uh, and I was going to bring it back to the contrast between hope and providence, that providence being that which disperses the good uh, to us. Uh, and what Ingmar was saying about the people who migrate, immigrate to America, uh, it's, a, it's a faith in providence, in there being a good through their action to be discovered, whereas hope is more of a selfish uh, affection uh, that where you think you know what is indeed best for you and cling on to a hope that you'll get exactly that, where providence might By doing what? By hoping. By hoping. Right? No effort. No, take, so there's no taking responsibility. There's only one person who's going to take responsibility for all the actions. That's the leader. That's a Christian God. Right. And therefore, you know, when Adolf Hitler loses, what happens to all the people that had the belief in him? They still believe. They're looking for another hoper. Somebody you're hoping. No, they're hopeless. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Is, there a, is there a difference now in looking at that this, and reading it? Did our talk in any way help understand this? Yes, sir. No. <laughs> but I'm still reading it. <laughs> okay. It always helps to have some. It also uh, does. It causes memory loss and forgetfulness. Yes. I just kind of thinking oh, no, about that's what we said about no, the, that's the essential. hoper and the hopi, not the Indian. Um, yeah, you have to you have to ignore, forget, 
their past record, whether or not they can be the kind of person who can fulfill a hope. Yes. That's right. All you want is them to demonstrate that they appear to be believable in the moment in which they're bestowing hope. That's right. I mean, you can watch retrospectives on, like, Trump says, I never said repeal and replace, and then they'll have a news of like seven times where he said, repeal and replace Obamacare, repeal and replace. It's like, there has to be no memory for this guy to function the way he okay. is. Because that's hope. Yeah. It's crazy. Because you hope he will still fulfill his promise of cleaning the swamp, of doing these great things, and who cares that he happens to lie and cheat? Who cares? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter because all you need is someone to firmly believe that they can lead and do the things they promise. Therefore, they instill hope in you. It also explains the failure of Obama. Is he had the poster hope? <laughs> I saw that, that poster. In my oh, the classic one oh. with the colors in his yeah. face and it says hope across the bottom of it. Have you guys seen that? Did you guys, uh, for the last few years, see that bumper sticker, the Republican bumper sticker that said, How's that hope and change thing going? Mm -hmm. Well, I want, I want to reprint that bumper sticker for this administration, right? Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder. Well, that's good. Well, I know. Oh, wait, we'll find out. I don't want to change the subject from hope because it's pretty powerful, especially one that, I mean, I've struggled with myself and try to get out of through pushing it under. But of the dance between Prometheus and Zeus. Because Prometheus knows the future, right? Like, he sees, he's forethought. Nice. So, in one sense, he knows the diseases are coming. And he's still thought that. that doesn't mean he's prophetic, though, does it? Isn't he thinking? Uh, excuse me. No, I don't mind. I'm, I'm not. I just thought. I was wondering when I read Prometheus Bound, like, doesn't he know he's going to get off the rock? Like, look. So, do you want to now say there's some relationship between? Antithetical? Mm. Yeah, totally. Then what do you think of the myth maker who put this together? It's very interesting. Isn't it? Sixth century BC. You see, you can't do too much with people that are, you know, uh, just getting to be on the literal stage of development. Did you? Yeah. Did you say sixth or sixteenth? Yeah. Sixth. <laughs> I think it was earlier than like, okay, let's try it another way. Again, what would it be like living in a culture where this is now talked about? Did he see it though? Is he see it 16? Well, he's trying to fill your destiny, right? Like, avoid fate, fulfill your destiny. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. And, but, but then, why do you gotta wait for heaven? What's that? Why do you got to pray for heaven, though, if you do what, what, How's that the name? I just... Go ahead. Oh, um, why does fire have a price? And why... And how could Zeus's mind be deceived? Well, first of all, a good number of the arts presuppose the, the ability to master fire. Right, we're dealing with um, metal work and the role of the good old, what was his name? The one who. The Forging? Uh, yeah. You mean the faces? Yeah. Blacksmith? What's his title? He's a I, I lost it. What's his name? Old Gingley Wood. What do we get the, 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 the hammerer, the. Thor. What? Well, no, no. Oh. Uh, he makes Achilles' shield in yes. the 
the new one in, in the yeah. Iliad. Yeah. Because in all of, in the ancient world, that person is one has a great title, and they're master craftsmen. Then they have to presuppose the ability to maintain and control fire. Fire is the vehicle through which all of the arts come into existence. Yeah, but I was, when I asked the question, I was asking this with fire itself being the metaphor for all these arts, right? Yeah. Why do all those arts yeah. and the knowledge of them yeah. Yeah. have a price? Yeah, or you could say light. Mm -hmm. L-I-G-H-T. Fire, light. It's enlightening. It, it mm -hmm. produces a change in consciousness in man. If he masters those particular things, medicine, metalworking, all the things that follow that. Because he stole it, in a sense, he stole it. He did. Yeah, so you, you can have knowledge and you can have the arts, but not for free. You're going to have to work to get it. But then, um, then you read you read this text less as a punishment and more as a just evening out. Yeah, it's not a punishment. That's yeah. right. What is it then? Revenge. Uh, and, and yes, it's not even no. revenge. It's just it's just it's just a, it's. A, it's a deal. He's describing the Greek world. It's not the right. It's a Hellenic world. It's not a Hebraic, Islamic, Christian world. Mm -hmm. And then he laughs aloud while he says that. Well, uh, just the price. What, how do you understand the price? That you had to learn the arts through sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. But but the price is the evil Pandora. Right? Because he stole the fire, they got Pandora. So I was just curious. Yeah, so what's the I was curious to know how you uh, how you want to understand price there. If you, if well, you we just you know, the price is because um, because the idea that you have the to work that you have to it, you know because the diseases present problems right, and the arts and knowledge are designed to deal with those problems. Okay. If you didn't have those problems. Um, well, I don't mind. You wouldn't need to, yeah. Well, but yeah. how do you understand the word price in, in its use? There? Well, that's what we just said. Oh, okay. So, well, I mean, you can add that to the text, but the idea of struggling to learn the arts is not explicitly the price in the myth, if you check it out. Uh, unless, unless you want to say you got to learn those arts because of Pandora. No. Go ahead. You know, uh, to me, I see a, uh, a similarity, or quite a similarity between this and the whole story in Eden and eating of the fruit of knowledge. Uh, and they got punished for that too, right? The, the, the gods there didn't like them. But man didn't do anything in this myth. You're right there, but the fact that but, there was a here the arts, intellect, light, uh, and in the Garden of Eden, they ate of the fruit of knowledge, and now they knew the difference between good and evil, and then they both got punished for. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's different because man didn't do anything here. No, yeah. and also there's a knowledge of good and evil. It is not knowledge of the arts. I, I just saw both yeah. of them as in. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Well, you were trying to find some virtue in hope. Yeah. And um, it seems that hope, in a way, functions kind of like the six hypotheses, if you look at it, or any of the negative hypotheses, mm. in that if one were to carefully examine hope and all the things that it's lacking, you would get a better insight into what it would be to live without hope. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. to live in a, a world where there's light and knowledge and understanding. Yeah. That's right. So it needs to be there as a final, like, to be examined and understood so that you can know what to avoid. Hmm. 
See, like we don't teach this stuff in our schools, right? But they grew up with the myths, right? therefore it had a nice transformative effect. Is it, it's curious, isn't it? Compact? Yeah. Right? Magnificently compact to Here. give. How yes, go right ahead. How do you respond to, like, I studied this myth at UCLA, and when this story came up, the professor said, the origin of misogyny. Like, that women are getting a bad name here. <laughs> 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 Note the response. <laughs> That's when you should have looked at the doorway and said goodbye, guys. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> it but, takes too much hope to stay there. No, that's really, that, that's an unusual story that you saw. That, see, the real name is ICU. <laughs> yeah, see, he only read the... Uh, intensive care? You know. <laughs> he reads the dog-like, shameless mind in thieving ways and overlooks the grace yeah. and the uh, uh, limb-fatiguing concern or care and the difficult desire that, that ma is manifest in the role of a woman. Yeah, Things yeah. that are valuable and noteworthy. So this professor says, oh, I found something about misogyny. Let's say all the Greeks, all, all the Greeks hate all women. And Really, it's not reading well. Yeah. That's all I would say. Yeah, it was a she, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> she hates men. Oh, excuse me. That's, that's just bad. Yeah. She said. No, there I am. See, uh, uh, it wasn't a woman. It was made of clay. Pandora. Some people say she's the first woman. I don't know if that's true. Well, um... That's how I like my that's kind of That's kind of like Adam and Eve. She's like made out of mud, so she must be the first woman. It may, you, like you're saying, it may not be the case that she was the first woman. Well, see, um, they formed a modest maiden's shape. They already knew it. Right. He, and also he bade Hephaestus to wet the earth with wa water. That's why you made the comment about she's made out of mud, or a mud woman, <laughs> even though she looks great. But they already um, knew what a form of a, a maiden would be. Oh. Um, Talk like shit. So she's. Uh, no, she's not a woman. No, she's, she's like a made of the earth. Doll. Right, it's a idol. Idol. Right, right. Is, so, is but nonetheless, a... it's worthwhile blaming women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't it true though that in the Iliad, the, the Zeus was deceived by Hera wearing the belt of Aphrodite, right, and she seduced him. Well, I'm just wondering why all of this about Zeus could not possibly have been deceived because he was a god. I don't know. The Iliad looks like he was deceived. Well, I would say um, he was easily deceived. Too easily, you think? He easily yes. deceived. And what is that? Well, he was in on it. Uh, he has that great description of her, and he looks her over, and hmm. <laughs> 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 he says, "Maybe we can get together." <laughs> By the way, there was once a, a offer at the NS Society some years ago for someone to draw uh, a picture of Zeus and Hera making love. <laughs> up yes. in the mountains where, of course, the clouds cover and allow them to escape detection. But do you think you could make a picture of how and what they were doing? We used to give prizes for that, like we used to, like a six-pack we'd offer up. Nice. Zeus and Hera, wow. Yeah, Challenge. yeah. Do you think that would be pornography? No. No! I think the proper price for that is a, a tab of LSD. <laughs> <laughs> that, that belongs in the Louvre. <laughs>
What state of mind do you think they were in? Hot. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought we'd have a little fun tonight doing yeah, some myths. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, here. Now, what brought this up? Why should I tell you? <laughs> Did you write something? <laughs> um, I'm doing a dialogue called uh, Socrates and Jesus Dialoguing in Heaven. And I'm using this myth as a way of understanding the difference between the Ambranic, Ambranic religions versus the Greek culture. And so when I got this, I said, I'm going to have some fun and pass it around. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. yeah. And also, by the way, I think the exact dynamics of hope is, is, uh, is our national problem with Trumpists. I agree. The Trump people, the one common denominator among them all is they all hope he'll fulfill his promises. It's almost beyond hope. It's and he, hope can't, he can't appear that way without appearing powerful, knowing. He has to have that image of Billy being believable. I don't get that image from him lately. But, um, Pardon? I mean, I don't seem to be getting that image from him lately. He's hiding out. No, no, I say Trump followers. Okay. Yeah. They don't care about the fact that he's losing all of these battles. It doesn't make any difference because they still hope he's going to fulfill them on his promises. That's hope. When I, when I run into Trump people, I'm sure you guys have the same experience, the phrase that comes up uh, is, we just got to give the guy a chance. Pardon me? <laughs> yeah. That's what they say. I've had three that people out. say that to me now. Pardon me, just say it again, mate. We, we just got to give the guy a chance. That's it, see? <laughs> That's all it means. They didn't give him a chance That's to fulfill bullshit. his promise to us. The By the so way, so the responsibility is everybody else's if he fails. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You and, just it, it on and it always follows that the person who's beseeching and, and uh, manipulating hope never fulfills the promises because they always have their own inner agenda, <coughs> and they tell the people we have to postpone on our on the promises I've made while I do this first. And it never comes about. But that's only because the press was against him and the Congress was against him. And it's all never, his, is anyway. never his fault. Thank you, guys. I had some fun with it. I thought you'd enjoy it, too. Now, I'm going to be late tomorrow. So, about at least a half hour, okay. I've got some kind of a conflict that, that, that has to take yeah, place. Yeah, so Pierre's going to be a little late, but uh, you can still bring munchies and we can I'm munch. in. I'm in. Okay. I'll be there. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to this while you're in town.